Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Ramoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast where we have digital discussions, the worlds of pop culture, social media, TV, film. Sports, news, everything really. As always, I'm your host, Peter Miliotis. On Twitter, I go as PD Beats. My guest is an actress. You will recognize her from many shows. Uh, most recently, you will recognize her as Tannis on Crave TV and in the Canada and Hulu in the States is Letter Kenny. But she's also been in shows such as Hamlock Grove, Defiance, Being Human, The Man in the High Castle. We are with Dio Horn. Dio, welcome to Pop Turnative. Thanks for having me. Hello. <laughs> Um, I know we've been, uh, we've been talking back and forth for a while to, to kind of make this, make this happen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really happy we're finally able to have you on the show. Yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. This is cool. This whole technology thing. I'm learning something. I might steal it. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah it's true. You, you've started a podcast as well. Yeah. Yes. And, how, with- and how's, and how's that going? It's going awesome. It's, um, it's been, um, something that has been a really great outlet for me and and yeah just and also it's been so new and learning the technology and learning just uh like growing with the technology i guess is really interesting and kind of fun Mm -hmm. absolutely whether you're a whether you act right um like musicians like sing play an instrument i always i find like I characterize you all as storytellers. When did Dia Horn decide that she wanted to be a storyteller? Um, I don't know if I, okay, well, we'll go way, way back. No, I'm just kidding. As storytellers do. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, but I, well, I always wanted to be an actress. And I think that, I mean, I know that that happened when I was um, around 11 or 12, when Ace Ventura, Jim Carrey's Ace Ventura came out. And I was like, oh my God, this guy's hilarious. And he does this for a living. Okay. And so it was kind of a thing that, like, it, it was the first time that I realized it could be a job and and that I could be paid to do something like that. And so, and I also have six older sisters. So I was always sort of like the, the, I'm the youngest. I like my attention. You know what I mean? And, um, and you know, they would put me like in the middle of the table and I would sing to them and stuff like that. Um, so I kind of realized I wanted to be an actor around, you know, when the Jim Carrey movie, as I said, and then I did sports my whole time in high school. And then I, uh, went into theater school at Dawson college when I was 16. Oh, um, uh, represent rep. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so I went to Dawson College, did theater school, graduated when I was 19, and and I remember being, I, I, I sometimes I tell this story, but like, this is when I, so I was in the car with my mom, and I was like, what do, like, what's my contribution to my community as an actor? And like, I just felt like very useless as an actor, and making that choice as, in my career, and I remember being like, what, what's my, like, what's the point of me, you know? And, um, and my mom was like, well, you'll figure it out. And I was like, oh God. And so, because I'm like, can you just tell me what my job is? Like, can you tell me how I'm contributing in society? I remember being in the car with my mom and me being like, what the hell, like, what good am I basically as an actor and kind of feeling like my career choice is sort of useless. And then she was like, you'll figure it out. And then I remember one day, years later, being like, oh, I'm a storyteller. I get it. <laughs> and so I remember figuring that out and um, like, you know, kind of like not feeling so bad about my career choice anymore. And then over the past maybe like five, six, seven years, I have been trying to figure out how I wanted to tell more stories, Mm -hmm. you know, and not just be constantly telling everybody else's stories, which I love and I'm, I have fun and I'm, you know, good at it and everything, but there's something that wasn't being fulfilled. And, um, and then I discovered podcasts and that was just like, 
mind blowing for me and it's a whole it new just, world it's a cra- it's a whole it's- new world and it was so like i was like yeah and i keep calling it like i keep referring to it as kind of being like kind of punk rock you know because it's like you can do whatever the fuck you want really mm-hmm. you can do whatever you want. Yeah. it can be so simple and you can do it with like you know like shitty punk rock is like three chords basically right and so doing a podcast is like Man, I don't know technology, like I'm not the greatest at technology, but I will figure it out in order for me to be able to tell my story. Kind of like punk rock. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's why a I- very good <laughs> Yeah, that that I, I got no, I got that. That's <laughs> awesome. Where I'm going with that? Yeah. Absolutely. Man, I remember Dawson. I was one of those like I was one of the Dawson college radio kids. So You were? Okay. Cool. I was I so that, to be part of the radio station. So but- that yeah, CIXS the edge. Mm-hmm. That, that's what it was called okay, and yeah. uh, i had a show called it was like a metal and punk show called the mosh block okay and i was cool. dj pd beats and nice. that's that's how it became my handle mm-hmm. on like yeah. on twitter yeah so it's 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 awesome one thing i wanted to before we're gonna get into we're gonna get into letter kenny and specifically other things but one mm-hmm. thing i always i thought of is you know when you look at someone's like i am like uh bd like and, yeah, IMDb, and <laughs> I always mix that up. By the way, okay. was, <laughs> but when you look at someone's kind of resume of what they've done, right? You'll see a lot of people like yourself that have a lot of like it's steady over a couple of years. It might be quiet a few years because it's very hard and it's a lot of auditioning and everything. But you'll see there's you know a couple of years there's five episodes here, a guest here, a main role yeah. here. And you look at a lot of people like yourself, you're like, wow, like these people are getting work and they're getting a, a, a consistent flow. You know what I mean? So my question to you is obviously, you know, you have to impress in the audition, but does how, like from the behind the scenes aspect, you might know this more than me. How important is like work ethic, like presenting yourself as someone that has a good work ethic to these casting directors and these writers have you ever thought about that like the work ethic oh yeah well i mean like you don't want to be like yeah for sure i don't know if i mean yeah your reputation definitely goes around you know mm-hmm. and um i was sort of like mindful of that i think and um you know because the world is so so small so you don't even you could you could think that like oh i'm on this like whatever like small short film and it's just this thing i'm getting paid like 200 dollars a day and you don't you're not putting in your all you know what i mean mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden maybe a year later two years later the person who is directing or producing or whatever anything could be on some other movie like a bigger movie yep. something that you know is like a contender for the for the oscars i don't know whatever for like for an example and yeah. and they could be like oh yeah no i don't want to work with that person because they were like a piece of shit on this other thing that we were working on you know so like the world is pretty small and it's especially small in canada and yeah. it's pretty small like yeah like, but I, I, w- I was thinking more like for example you know I, this is this is what I was thinking of. No, like I, I get, I get, like no. Your answer is 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 mm-hmm. interesting. But what I was alluding to more is like, okay, um, there's a show that you know um, we need like a recurring role. We need like the friend of um, of the like of one of the leads. You know what I mean? That they meet up at the bar. You know what I mean? And she's around, and you know we need her for three, four um, episodes. And it's like you're looking at it, it's like oh you know what like Dio we had her on like Hemlock Grove and certain other oh. things. You know what I mean? She'll come in, do the scene. She'll be very professional. Like I was looking at that aspect of it more. You know what I well, mean? Well, yeah. I mean, well, yeah, because it was the same thing that I was answering. Is like you don't you can't be a dick, and you just got to be good at what you do. <laughs> And you got to be like versatile. And I feel like going to something like Dawson Theater Program was uh, was a huge, a huge, huge like game changer for me as somebody coming up into the industry. First, because you know I'm from I'm not I'm not from like I'm from outside of Montreal, and people from Montreal kind of like have like a thing, anyways. And I'm we'll say it, you know, we're kind of cool, but. Uh, but also coming from Gunawage, like I got like a little bit of like things like going for me that make me a little bit like not run of the mill, I guess. And then also going to a theater school that basically 
kind of puts in your brain like I can play anything. I can play a 95 year old man. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They prepare you for that because it's like as if you're going to ever be playing a 95 year old man. But but it kind of prepares you for being versatile and being able to jump in. You know what I mean? And no, I, for sure. I can jump in, but also at the same time, I'm like, I, I've made my name doing that, I think. And I feel like I'm, I'm, I like doing that, but I'm also kind of, you know, like I'm kind of itching to do, I want to be a lead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I want to do that kind of stuff now, you know, I think I, like you said, my resume is like, super long and it can be like a guest spot here it can be a this there whatever you know but but yeah we gotta mention we, we gotta we have a we have a, a strong pop alternative has a strong uh a, a audience in terms of letter kenny fans love our show because we have featured many people from letter kenny on the show we've interviewed jared kiso tyler oh, johnson cool. hmm. uh, uh, nate, uh nate dale's been on the show um we we've had we've had we've had a, a few of them um on before and uh you kind of mentioned before we were taping i mean going to hulu has kind of created a whole new world for the show in regards to the fad base and everything so a couple things one talk about your character tannis and then talk a little bit about the reception and the expansion of letter kenny into the u.s um okay well tannis is this character uh, well okay so we were talking about um, you know, reputation and like all of that stuff and knowing people in the industry being small and everything. Well, I, when I auditioned for Letter Kenny, I saw my friend Jacob Tierney's name on the breakdown and I was like, oh my God, Jacob. Okay, cool. You know, and I did the Trotsky with him and I also did Good Neighbors with him. And um, so I was sort of like, okay, like I kind of knew like the realm of like what he, you know, would kind of be looking for because I didn't really know Jared Kiso. I, I knew him like in passing kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, so I was just like, okay, I'm just going to trust my instincts with this one. <laughs> and so I went into my audition and I, I sort of channeled maybe like people that I know from back home, but also like, you know, maybe, maybe it might be a little bit of a side of me. <laughs> when I'm back home no but uh or like I, yeah anyways so so that's how kind of like tennis came around and they kind of like liked what the, the direction that I was going and um it kind of added and you know it, it kind of like all of the roles on letter can kind of complement each other we're all kind of repping different areas of Canada right and mm -hmm. so I was just like really happy that I was, I was going to be, I knew I was, when I was auditioning, I was going to be in a safe place where somebody like Jacob Tierney was going to be receptive to what I, like, you know, he was picking up what I was putting down basically. No, absolutely. And, um, and so, yeah. And so in Canada, it was, it was really cool to be sort of like on this, like up and like this show that was like coming out and it was kind of like new and had this like sort of like new, like, it's almost like a song, you know what I mean? Like, it's like the way that it's written and stuff like that. And it's kind of got like its own rhythm and, and Canadians were picking it up. And so um, to be a part of that and then, and then it, it, like, you know, my Instagram started like kind of, you know, getting more followers and everything. And it was like growing slowly and it would be like Alice from, like I said a while ago, like Alice from Fort Mac, you know, and I'm like, okay, cool. Alice from Fort, I could put it like a face to the name kind of thing. And then, and then Letter Candy got on Hulu and that was like a whole other ball game, man. Like I, I, I'm like, I, I can't really put a face to John in Iowa. You know what I mean? Like, I don't like, it's like just getting so much more bigger and like me and my niece, like, you know, my, my little millennial nieces, whatever. I'll be like, yo, I'm getting like 50 fucking followers a week. And they're like, no. And I'm like, yo, I'm at like 18.5 now and they're like what and then like i'll be like yo i'm at like 18.7 now and they're like why you were 18.5 like a week ago and I'm like, no and I'm like, and so it's like this kind of thing that like has sort of like expanded so much that i'm like i don't even know how i but i did you know and it's part of the game but do you weird. think it's like do you think the popularity of the show in the states has to do with the because it is 
it's raunchy, right? Like the like Letter Kenny is very raunchy, especially with certain characters. Do you mm-hmm. like what do you think has made it so popular in in the US? Cuz another thing too is hockey isn't as popular. It's getting more popular, but it's not as popular in the US as it is in Canada, right? Mm-hmm. And a big part of Letter Kenny is about hockey. Yeah. Is it though? I mean, it is think- hockey, but I mean, it's like I mean, hockey's going to be there anyways because hockey's just a part of all of our lives anyways. I know? just love, I love the whole, like, what they did with, like, the whole Shorzy thing is, like, amazing. No, but I'm saying, <laughs> yeah, I, like, I just feel like every aspect of of Letterkenny is a part of Letterkenny. Yeah. You know? It's not really, like, I, I wouldn't label it as, like, a hockey center. No, it's, it's not. No, yeah. But um, I think the popularity is i mean i think it's something new it's something fresh but also something like you know like for americans it's because we always canadians we were always in that we're not american but we're not british but we have a bit of that we have that dry sense of humor and we impersonate americans better than americans impersonate americans do you know what i mean there's sort of like we bridge a gap between america and and american and british humor and i think I think maybe Letterkenny, and it's not. There's other shows that that grasp that as well. But I it's think, funny you well, mention that. It's yeah. fu- I, that's a good point too, because I find there's a lot of Canadian, like especially for comedy specifically. You look at shows like Kim, like in Canada, like Kim's yeah. Convenience and Letterkenny that are doing really well, and Shit's Creek, right? And then look at you, like shows from the UK that yeah. are doing well as well. I find like in the comedy aspect of yeah. it too. The office, you know, like mm-hmm. all of that stuff. It's like, I mean, sex education just launched on Netflix. I don't know if you heard of that. Oh, one. Really? oh yeah. 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 Jillian yeah. Anderson from X files mm-hmm. who a lot of people didn't realize that she was British. So like she showed up on the show and she's British and people were like, what? Yeah. Like, I didn't know that Jillian Anderson from X files was British. Is she British though? She's I British. Really? Yes. I thought she was sort of like mixed or something, or she grew up in both er- in both in both countries. I think. Well, I, she- I don't know if it's it, it. She has a British I'm accent like on specific. the shows. Okay. <laughs> she she has she has a British accent on Sex Education. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. when you see it, you're like, whoa! Like, I'm, yeah, like yeah. you don't realize it. But I find that interesting because what do you kind of think about that too? Like shows like and like Canada, the Canadian like entertainment scene. Mm-hmm. A lot of it is in Montreal and a lot of it's in Toronto. Everyone's kind of friends with everyone. Everyone kind of knows each other a little bit. Yeah. And like, you've, I'm sure you've crossed paths with people on other shows as well. But like... Well, movie with uh, one of the hockey girls, Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's from Letterkenny or whatever. Well, she's also on a million other things, but she's on Killjoys and stuff. She was just in... She had a, a role in a movie called A Simple Favor. Have you seen that movie yet? No. No. With um, Blake Lively and Anna Kendrick. Okay. Great movie. And Kelly has a role in that movie. She plays like oh. one of the neighbors. I know. And that's it, like, that's awesome. When I saw her, yeah. I'm like, oh man, from Letter Kenny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. So she, I'm doing a movie with her right now. Her, her movie is called Sugar Daddy. And she wrote that. And um, yeah, I love the, I love the crossover. Like the, I mean, especially the people who've been like going at it for, like I've been doing this for like 15 years now. Like I, and I kind of don't really really realize it until you say it out loud, and you're like, oh yeah, that is like almost half of my life, you know. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's a little less than half my life, but <laughs> no, but, I, I no, I I, 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 I get that for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, this whole industry, whether it's podcasting, whether it's um, like just entertainment, it's just it's a grind, mm-hmm. and it uh, that's some of the misconceptions I think that happens, right? Where you see someone's on it, been like someone's on one of your favorite shows and has like four or five uh, like episodes, and you're like, man, this person's awesome. It's a newcomer, and it's like you realize they've been doing it for like fifteen years, right? Oh yeah, totally. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big one thing I did want to uh, talk about is. Um, what I find really cool is you were on a show called Hemlock Grove. And the reason I bring that up is I find it interesting because Hemlock Grove was like one of the very first Netflix original series. Yeah, it was one of the first four. Yes. That's pretty cool to yeah, say that you were on one of the first ones considering how yeah. big Netflix series have become. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, it is pretty cool, actually. Yeah. Have you ever thought about that in the bigger scheme of things? 
Pardon? Have you ever thought about that in the bigger scheme of things where like it's kind of it laid down the foundation of a lot of those shows? Yeah, no, I I I remember when it was new and people were like, Oh, okay and you're like, I know, I don't really get it either. And um and then I realized at one point that my most of my career things that I've been on have been have had like drops. Like not like, oh, like this is gonna start on this day and it's gonna be every Tuesday at eight. It's like no, it's like it's been this sort of I feel like I've been on this uh I mean there there was also like a show I did that isn't like that like I did Defiance and I've done like 18 to Life and stuff like that that was like a weekly thing but for the most part my career has been sort of these like Hemlock Grove drops on this day and then it's sort of this ongoing thing and then Man in the High Castle drops on this day Letterkenny drops on this day all of these sort of just a different new medium right mm -hmm. the streaming services no, it's insane. Okay, so I always is eighteen to life the one with Michael Cedar. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I the it reason is I, yeah. So the 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 reason um I I I bring this up is because every time I we're like we talk about like Canadian film and and uh, TV, I always like to bring it up because it's mm -hmm. I think it's really important. But Michael Cedar was on a show called Life with Derek, which was yeah. on um, was a Canadian show, but what? that was well, it was a Disney show. Oh, okay, okay. Like it was a Canadian, it was it was a Canadian yeah, yeah. production. It took place. It was very, and it was like a very cozy Canadian show about a family in London, Ontario, right? But it was on Disney Channel. Like it was part of their big. It was part That's of their big cool. rotation. Okay. Yeah. I didn't I, realize they were supposed to be from London, Ontario. Yeah, they were in London, Ontario, and it had a lot. It was like it was it was one of my favorite shows That's growing cool. up. You know, like Canadians, like we grew up with like Family oh, yeah. Channel. We never got anything. We're like, oh my god, they mentioned Vancouver, and you're like, I have nothing to do with Vancouver, but they still mentioned something about Canada. <laughs> like, fa fa Family Channel had kind of a mix of like yeah. the Disney Channel, Nickelodeon shows, but then had their kind of own shows mm -hmm. that they were making. And then Life with Derek, though, was actually one of those shows that kind of got like I think purchased by Disney Channel. It was like a Disney Channel show. Yeah. So okay. I find that really on this really like on this one that, that I think is like a BBC. Is it BBC? Oh man, oh man, cut this out because okay. I totally forgot what the. <laughs> but I'm I'm on like this kids show that has like a co-production. It's supposed to. It's like the new Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh. And I play like a cool like a robot like an evil robot thing. Only oh. one episode, but it's like a pretty cool episode. Like I, yeah, no, it's it it's crazy the landscape of it. Um. I think we'll wrap up soon, but what are some kind of things that you, you've been working on or you're looking forward to for the next couple of months that you're, that Dio Horn is like pumped, pumped about? Mm, well, I just, I just direct, like was, I started my own podcast coffee with my mom. And then from that, it's opened up this like whole world. And I was just, I just directed a podcast for the government kind of. And, um, but I'm not really like allowed to say what it is. And it's going to come out in like April 30th or something. Anyways, just watch out for that. But also, um, I'm doing, I'm playing um, uh, Kelly's best friend on her movie that she... Sugar Daddy? Yeah, Sugar Daddy with Colm Fjord and Aaron Ashmore. Um, really cool, cool, cool cast. And then... Ghost BFF, which is a web series that I did, just got picked up for a season two. And uh, I'm also writing my own feature, which is a kind of like a, it's a stoner comedy. <laughs> that's that's awesome. <laughs> where, where could people follow you on social media? What are the handles? Um, at Ganya Dio. So it's at my, my full first name. Mm -hmm. So if you just... Oh, my screen door is going crazy um yeah. so yeah if you just look up my name on imdb and then copy the first name mm -hmm. onto your social media because there's a fake account out there that says deal horn and it's not me okay i don't know it's <laughs> weird that they it's kind of weird to me that somebody did that so long ago but whatever it's like a bummer too eh? it's like in a sense it's like yeah no, i mean i'm, I'm significant people are like i tagged you on that thing and then i look i'm like you did not tag me. You tagged that fake account that I don't, you know, I don't even know what I tried to report them because I'm like, 
Yeah. Then it's the fan page, and I'm like, keep report, cool. keep reporting as okay. Well, that's different. Fan pages, unfortunately, unfortunately, they they kind of get away with it. I know. Yeah, but personation. They don't. Yeah, no, no, no. They I know Paul from uh, Kim's Convenience. Mm -hmm. He had an issue on Instagram where someone was like impersonating him. I get like a lot of followers too. Yeah. Cool, yeah. <laughs> so That's freaky. That freaks me out. No, I know. It's 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 crazy. The but uh, um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. This is really cool. I might look into this whole thing. No, absolutely. <laughs> um. Well, this has been Popternative, youtube.com slash Popternative for the video episodes, Spotify, iTunes for the audio. Until next time, this is Dio Horn and Peter Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Popternative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Popternative on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.